Good evening, everybody. So uh, we will start our uh, open forum on Arab perspective regarding uh, digital cooperation and internet governance. Um, I would like to convey, first of all, uh, the apology of my colleague uh, Ayman Sherbini, who was co-organizing this session, but uh, he couldn't be uh, with us now because of uh, some health uh, issues. Uh, now let me uh, start by uh, thanking Mr. Jovan, who was a former uh, executive director of the high-level panel on digital uh, cooperation. Uh, and uh, we will be delighted to have him starting with us overviewing about uh, the report, the main report that uh, was published a few months ago, and the main context of this uh, high-level uh, panel uh, work process. Mr. Jovan, please. Great. Well, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, it's really great to be today here at uh, the session focusing on the digital developments in the Middle East. Uh, as um, Nora just indicated, I was involved with the high-level panel. It's a rather long title, but it goes something like Executive Director of the Secretariat of the UN Secretary General High-Level Panel on Digital Cooperation. Could you repeat it now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <Can> applause. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, long, a long title, and it was really a unique, unique exercise. You were asked by Secretary General to uh, uh, provide the reflections of what can be done uh, in the field of digital developments. And we got quite, quite sort of a, a open, open uh, hands to, to work on it. And it was really exciting process of 10 months of consulting with the stakeholders worldwide. And the report was presented in, uh, in June. And uh, there are few, few basically main findings of the report. As you know now, there is preparation for the, for the follow-up uh, discussion on the, on the report and, uh, and the implementation coordinated by UN uh, Secretary General's office. But it will, the consultations on implementation will, will follow the spirit of the consultation in the build-up for the report. It, it will be inclusive, open to all stakeholders, and that, I think, spirit of inclusion and, uh, and the multi-stakeholder approach is quite, quite prominent also in thinking about the, about the implementation. Now, there are five sets of recommendations, and uh, I will uh, go quickly through, through, through all of them and uh, give you the gist what is behind. You can read them, obviously, in the, in the report itself. The first set of recommendations is on inclusive digital uh, economy and society. This set of recommendations could be called as sort of a, a 18th SDG, you are familiar with the acronym Sustainable Development Goals. As you know, there are 17 SDGs. For some reasons, digital didn't play prominently in SDGs, which I think was helpful because SDGs were not technology driven. There is only one uh, uh, indicator 9C, which deals directly with the digital technology. The panel uh, tried to basically rebalance that with, the, with the, this first recommendation and uh, strand that elements of inclusion, inclusion of the uh, gender inclusion and uh, also measuring inclusion and indicated by uh, 2030 that every adult should have affordable access to digital network, also digital health. Therefore, that was the spirit of this to bring the the, the question of digital into SDGs framework. <coughs> the second uh, is on uh, human and institutional capacity. And here there were a few, uh, the key element is to develop regional and global help desks for digital cooperation. And one of the key issue here is to develop, let's say, 360 degree capacities. What we are finding now is that on individual capacities, we are doing relatively well. There are capacity development program trainings. Much more needs to be done. But there are very often weak uh, institutions, in the, especially in the Global South. 
I mean, institutions can could ensure sustainable development of policy framework, inclusive economy, and this is this have been we have been uh, um, witnessing as one of the major uh, challenge. The third uh, set of uh, recommendations uh, deal with the human rights and human agency. The uh, recommendation 3A invites uh, basically Secretary General to see how digital technology impacts various aspects of human rights, to have more holistic approach in addition to traditional area where digital and human rights are discussed, freedom of expression and protection of privacy, also to question of disabilities, multi multiculturalism, and other, other uh, sort of horizontally other aspects of, the, of uh, human, human, human rights. Then there is a question of social media and uh, basically uh, protection of human rights in social media, especially towards, uh, towards children. And the 3C is probably the most interesting uh, in the view of new technologies. It is interplay between human rights and artificial intelligence. To what extent human rights regime can guide us in, uh, in guiding developments of artificial intelligence? I think that's a relatively strong message that human rights regime as existing tool, tool, legally binding tool, should be used for the future developments of artificial intelligence. Then we were relatively modest and shy when it comes to trust and security and stability. As you know, it is a highly, highly controversial issue. There are two processes on the UN level, open-ended working group and the UN, uh, UNGG. And we basically called for the more convergences and more cooperation without anything specific, calling for the global commitment on digital trust and security. But I would say here we stayed a relatively um, sort of uh, open for the future consultations and developments. The fifth recommendation deal with the, with the digital cooperations and something which, which we can refer to as uh, digital governance, or more specifically, internet governance. We have to be careful about terminology because that's, there are some sometimes uh, confusing signals. Uh, here, the panel asks uh, Secretary General to use the context of the UN 75th uh, anniversary, which will be celebrated the next year during the General Assembly week in uh, New York, where the heads of state uh, will well, join for their annual ritual, but this time celebrating 75th uh, anniversary, to accept global commitments for digital cooperation, to enshrine shared values, principles, understanding, and objectives for the improved global uh, cooperation architecture. And that's, that sort of uh, has uh, two elements. It has uh, uh, elements of um, values, and elements of the very practical mechanisms. The panel proposed three models, and out of these three models, the most interesting, probably for this community, is IGF Plus, or building on the IGF as, uh, as a mechanism for, uh, for uh, digital cooperation. And uh, that's, I would say, the main topic, how to, how to continue what we have been doing for quite some time, to support, to push the strengthening of the IGF uh, in its, with its core spirit of being multi-stakeholder space, but also that we sometimes say to become some sort of new digital, or not new, uh, it exists already, digital home for humanity, where uh, different stakeholders will feel comfortable to come and join discussions, pose their problems, and, uh, and uh, search for solutions. That's the most interesting, uh, I would say, aspect. And usually, you know, how it is with these reports, it's a bit hidden in the, in the, in the document. But this is this 5A five, five, uh, uh, recommendation. And ultimately, the key question is how and to what extent IGF plus proposal should be developed? How big and how bold, as I was told recently, should be this plus in IGF plus? There are proposals to establish three elements. One is cooperation accelerator. Second is policy incubator. And third one is a support function observatory and help desk. 
there is also a line in the proposal that all stakeholders should have also possibility to discuss for one day, or uh, that is not specified, issues al uh, along their tracks, whether governments, businesses, civil society. Because that was clearly indicated in our consultations that stakeholder groups also want to have their own special tracks in addition to multi-stakeholder track. That's, let's say, 10,000 feet view. I'm, we can go uh, dwell uh, into more details on any of these aspects. Uh, this, this is the summary of the five recommendations and the main uh, building blocks for the, their implementation. Thank you very much for this uh, fruitful and helpful uh, uh, overview about the main outcomes of uh, the high-level uh, panel report on digital cooperation. And uh, now we will move together actually with the panel uh, in order to discuss uh, the main principles and uh, outcomes and opportunities to see how uh, we can be applied at uh, regional level and what are the main implications uh, in our uh, region. I would uh, leave the floor for our uh, uh, two moderators. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Kusayil Shatti. Uh, who is a regional expert in the field of ICT for development. Mr. Shatti was actually uh, the first uh, host for the Arab, uh, uh, the Arab IGF in the, in the region in 2012 in Kuwait. And he is currently an active contributor and participant in the field of digital cooperation and digital development. We have also a, co uh, a co moderator, Mr. Uh, Iba Awaishik, who, uh, who is the former chairman uh, of Arab team for uh, domain names and internet issues at the League of Arab State, uh, at the League of Arab State. And he is also, he was his former digital, uh, sorry, uh, director general of uh, TRA in Syria and currently is playing the role of advisor to the Minister of uh, Communication and Technology in Syria. Uh, Mr. Kusai and Mr. Iba, the floor is yours. Uh, please uh, go ahead. First, we would like to thank Ivan for his uh, brief on uh, digital cooperation and really setting the scene for us and enlightening us on the uh, recommendation of digital cooperation. And so his presence is highly appreciated and we thank him for that. Uh, I'm so honored and pleased to have this wonderful uh, panel, uh, Mr. Fahad Bataina from Jordan, who is the ICANN, uh, from ICANN, uh, Hanan Bujemi, uh, from uh, Morocco, and uh, Mr. Shafiq Shaya from the RIPE NCC, and uh, uh, Mrs. Christine Arida from NTRA Egypt, and uh, Hisham uh, Bouliazi uh, from uh, NTRA Egypt too. So we are so happy to have this wonderful uh, panel, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass the floor to my co-moderator. Thank you, Hussein. Uh, please allow me to welcome everyone. It's great that we have representative of several communities. Uh, I think that all communities are being, in a way or other, represented around this table, and we would like to gather the input, their, all their input or possible input and feedback in the terms of digital cooperation. Um, I will start uh, very quickly with uh, our friends from RIPE NCC. Uh, actually, the question is very simple. Is in, in terms of the priorities or the perception of your community, the community that you represent, the technical community in a way or another, uh, we would like to hear your main feedback about the report of, uh, on digital cooperation and more specifically, what are the most important issues where there need to be better cooperation and with whom? Thank you. Very good and important question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Iba. the first line. It's exactly, yeah. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank you and thanks ESQUA for uh, inviting us for this interesting uh, panel. Uh, as an organization uh, who is working with 
a part of uh, internet infrastructure and as a facilitator uh, to coordinate uh, technical uh, issues uh, with other uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, RIPE NCC is firmly uh, supporting the any multi-stakeholder approach. Given uh, our long uh, involvement in the existing IGF and our invested uh, interest in maintaining uh, this multi-stakeholder uh, approach, I believe uh, the RAP NCC is a well placed as a neutral player uh, in Europe, Middle East, and part of the uh, Central uh, Asia where we uh, support our members. So, first of all, we did submit a formal uh, reply to the UN uh, report. Uh, to summary our reply, first, we have stated that we support the existing model of the IGF with its values of inclusiveness, transparent, and multi-stakeholder approach. Knowing that, we mentioned and recognized some challenges as the lack of concrete outcome and participation, active participation of policies of uh, Maker, policy makers and representatives of the industry. So these are uh, the main concerns or challenges that we can uh, share for this UN report. Another uh, point that we mentioned, which is very important, is that we also encouraged the panel to take into consideration the discussions that take place at national and regional level and to incorporate or to put a process to take over these discussions to a global discussion. Because doing this, we can uh, uh, take the concerns and the uh, issues that these developing countries would like to highlight, but they don't have resources to come and participate in this global debate. So this is the highlight or our main reply to UN uh, uh, high-level uh, panel uh, recommendation for digital cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Great answer. Thank you. Mr. Um, Hussain, about uh, can, can if you like, take, can we take, can we take other, another other, another answer? If, uh, if anyone is interested in providing another answer, Christine, please. 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 Christine, you represent governments. Yeah, I do. Um, present specifically my government. <laughs> Your government. Yeah, yeah right. Um, well, no, it's, um, I probably speak from a more general perspective. Uh, uh, and since we're talking in this specific session about digital cooperation and internet governance, so um, I, I'm trying to make a step back and look at uh, uh, the IGF. And, um, and I think um, we were all, we've been for a couple of years realizing that the IGF is at a cross point, I would say, at a crossroad, uh, that there is need for evolution. There have been many voices uh, for enhancement, for evolution. There have been also a lot of efforts that were put into the IGF. And we've seen success, success indicators. Um, we've seen more trust come from stakeholders. Uh, we've seen um, concrete outcome come out uh, like uh, a repository, I would say, of knowledge coming out, best practice forums, uh, uh, documents produced by uh, the different intersessional uh, uh, programs, the, the policy options, all that. So, so there is an involvement and there is a sense of maturity. Uh, seeing the IGF over those 14 years, it's definitely very different than the IGF we've seen in the first f five years. Of course, with the same mandate. But on the other hand, we're also seeing grassroots effect for the IGF. We're seeing national and regional and youth IGFs, and uh, that's the bigger term, that there is also an implication inside the countries, even if a country doesn't have a national IGF, there is an impact of the IGF. There's an impact on policy discussions. Uh, there is a tendency towards multi-stakeholderism that is uh, that governments feel pressured that they have to do. I mean, they can't really anymore go into policy making without reaching out. 
either from a norm perspective or even from a practical perspective. They can't do that alone. They have to do it with private sector. They have to do it with uh, big companies, uh, with uh, international partners, with everything. So how can we actually help the IGF evolve among all that is happening? And, and this is where we welcome very much the report of uh, the digital cooperation because if, if we look at the proposed models, and I would really like to look at the IGF plus model. I like very much the four components that, or the three components plus the advisory group that was put. To me, I see the advisory group and the cooperation uh, accelerator as something that reaches out on a global level. It's, it, it would have, as it's proposed, um, in its proposed function, it would have the capability of actually looking into other forums. For us, you mentioned the UN for us for security. There are other things happening. There are many things happening on artificial intelligence. I mean, the IGF needs to reach out on a global level. But it needs to go back into the roots and get something from the grassroots. And where I this is where I think the policy incubator and the help desk and observatory can do that job. So I actually see there is a line in the middle. We have uh, the global cooperation and we have a grassroots effect. The point is now how to actually connect the loop. Christine, if have you can close, please close. That was it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Sorry for interrupting you, but time is a little bit critical. Uh, we would hear, we would like to hear a third opinion from another community, maybe uh, Hanan, if you can. You, re in a way or another, you represent private sector, uh, <laughs> civil society. Uh, uh, no, in a way, I'm a note taker <laughs> at the moment, so I'm trying to just capture the main points uh, and the relationship between the outcome of the um, high-level panel and the uh, regional process. Um, and I think, you know, the um, recommendations that uh, Jovan just brought us on uh, feed into um, very much into the work that we've been doing um, at the level of the Middle East for. Um, the last uh, seven or eight years. Um, in my view, you know, our region requires a lot more, a lot more work, you know, than, than we're doing now in order to, to be able to incorporate the point of views um, of everybody in the discussion when it comes to um, uh, policies uh, related to internet governance and digital cooperation. Um, so there is a huge gap still when it comes to uh, bringing, you know, voices together to this space um, to be able to uh, discuss, you know, what's at stake um, at the global level. At the moment, we're still struggling with capturing uh, what people want at the national level. Uh, so the lack of representation um, from the Middle East is actually alarming, and it tells us something that we need to do a lot more work, you know, um, to be in a position to formulate a, a, you know, a policy position. So you need the grassroots. So Christine was you know, talking about the grassroots level, which is important, and um, we don't see that happening, unfortunately, for so many reasons. So there is the political, obviously, situation in the Middle East, which makes things a lot more difficult at various fronts. But there is also the lack of uptake. Um, people are busy, you know, with so many other things, you know, daily life issues that prevent us from having that representation to formulate this policy position. So I think we can definitely, um, you know, uh, feed into the work of the high-level panel, specifically the recommendation, because it cuts um, a lot of the legwork that we have to do. You know, it gives us a snapshot of the main principles we have to focus on uh, we, and we basically just need to get to work uh, to be able to achieve um, a level where digital cooperation can help us advance our economy, our uh, human agents, uh, you know, the kind of the welfare state that we aim at, you know, in, in, in the Middle East, hopefully, in Thank the you, near Hannah. future. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, dear panelists, for... Uh, your input on the first question. And the second question, based on what we just heard, uh, my question will be directed to Mr. Fahed Bataina and to Mr. Hisham Bouyazid. What do you see as regional priorities, 
and issues related to digital cooperation in light of what has been said by the first panelists. And allow me to start with Hisham first and then we'll move to Fahd. Uh, please, if you can limit your input into for two minutes so we can allow more time. Yeah, I, uh, I think I can do that. Um, well, um, f first of all, I want to um, kind of build on uh, Yuvin's introduction to the overall uh, motivation behind the work of the UN Secretary General on this one. And maybe because this community has been too much focused, I would say, on the recommendations part and the IGF plus part, we have, to some extent, not uh, paid enough attention to the rest of the report that outlines, uh, I would say, a bigger problem. Um, and I, I, I want to zoom in a little bit on a specific part of that report related to uh, the trust deficit uh, syndrome or uh, uh, that was outlined in section three of that report, the trust deficit disorder specifically. And I, I, I want to elaborate a little bit, if you allow me, Kusai, on the trust issue here. The, the IGF has been one of the examples, and even at the regional level, we had the Arab IGF, the North African IGF, um, uh, even at the regional level, and I want to give uh, some examples like the Arab IGF and the North African IGF, which I happen to be involved in, in both in different capacities. Um, but it, it was obvious from the beginning that different stakeholders tasked different processes in a, in a very different manner. Like um, so some government, even at the government, at, at the stakeholder level, uh, one group of stakeholders still see different processes differently. So not all civil society would approach these processes equally, and the same in government, same in private sector. Um, but if you look at the users and how they are, um, because they are the most affected, I would say, uh, at the individual level at least. Uh, when we, um, last year, or actually earlier this year, uh, it's still 2019 in a way, um, we, we had a questionnaire when we were planning for the annual events. So we, we wanted to outreach in a, gas route way, as you mentioned, Christine, and to see how people are actually um, affected by these issues. And the, the first topics that came as concerns for those people, it was mainly about data protection and cybersecurity. Then in second priority, it came the uh, legal and legislative issues and the evolution of the multi-stakeholder model. Uh, since I, I have spent some time on these results, I, I've been thinking with the group that uh, worked on this, how we can actually make inference out of these data. It, it was, in, in, in a way, obvious to us that these two priorities are very related. Uh, cybersecurity and data protection are still a concern for users because it's about the safety and the trust. You can close it, please. Uh, I will conclude in 20 seconds if I have this. Um, so it, uh, and when they are looking for solutions, they still look at two things, the legal frameworks to protect them and the multi-stakeholder processes that they still can take this issue forward. Thank you, Qusay. Thank you, Hisham. Fahed, please. Yeah, thank you, Qusay, and uh, thank you for having me uh, on this panel. I'm, I'm, I'm really privileged. So I'm Fahed Bataina and I, come, I work for ICANN. Um, and actually, listening to my other colleagues, I just wanted to focus on one aspect. So at ICANN, uh, we have a new strategic plan that is effective on the 1st of July of 2020. Uh, and in that strategic plan, which will be running for the next five years until 30th of June of 2025, uh, there are five focus areas that ICANN will be focusing on in the next uh, five years. I won't mention all of them, but uh, three worth mentioning is uh, security, stability, and resiliency of the unique identifier system. Um, and of course, cybersecurity is a big uh, topic and a big trend uh, today. Uh, governments and countries are investing uh, billions of dollars into developing the cybersecurity uh, infrastructure. <clears throat> Number two is governance. And while we have this really uh, nice uh, model of uh, uh, bottom up, multi stakeholder consensus driven uh, policy development process, um, it needs revisiting. Um, I mean, uh, the, all the policy development work that is being undertaken at ICANN is uh, growing and uh, we need more people to work on that. So the objective here is really to uh, revisit the multi-stakeholder model that is being used at ICANN um, and trying to evolve it. And actually we are seeing um, other organizations around us 
um, actually looking at a similar uh, way, yeah, looking at the multi-stakeholder model uh, in a similar way. Uh, number three is geopolitics and um, the ever-evolving geopolitics, what uh, GDPR actually instigated around the world. Uh, this is something uh, we are looking into, tracking uh, global legislation, seeing how things will be affecting the unique identifier system. So in many ways, these, these different topics actually um, are touched upon by the, by the report, uh, which I personally very much welcome and find of, of value, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Fayed, for being prompt on time. Uh, let me ask dear Mirnev from the prospect of regional organizations and based on the forum that has been held last April at the ESCOA, what have you sensed that the, the priorities and the issues related to the same question? Thank you, Kusai. Actually, um, um, based on the new reform that we are following uh, currently at uh, the UN system and uh, having in mind that we are preparing uh, to uh, improve our work together and synergize our effort to work as one UN, uh, and uh, as per our first mandate is to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, we are uh, hoping that uh, uh, this uh, new framework of digital cooperation would be a main framework under which we can combine uh, uh, all our efforts and synergize all our efforts uh, at the same time to build the digital economy in, the, in our region and improve uh, this sector as a standalone sector and from the other side to have this digital technology as a main engine uh, that uh, would help in achieving SDGs. And uh, I'm very happy that, uh, as Jovan just said in his uh, overview, that we may need to invent a new, to put uh, in place a new SDG, which is SDG 18, <laughs> and uh, try to reach uh, some level of uh, digital uh, economy at regional level and global level. Thank you, Merda. I'll, there, I'll pass the floor to my dear colleague. Thank you, Hussai. Uh, we still have something like 18 minutes, I think. Uh, we still have two questions which have not been asked yet. Uh, now, the question um, I would like to hear again from um, the technical community. Okay, again, please, uh, Fahad or, uh, uh, or, or Shafi. Uh, actually, um, during the session, uh, the high-level session uh, which, which was held at the, at the first day, uh, uh, in the main hall during the, the, the when the, 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 the report was presented. Uh, some of the comments that I heard were about various working groups working in policy making and policy making bodies and working groups uh, talking about the same issues but not sharing results and information, okay. which resulted in duplication of efforts resulted in a way or another of, um, I would say, um, wasted, wasted efforts and not reaching consensus and, and results as, as quickly as possible. Uh, I would like to hear what's your opinion about the situation in the Arab region uh, from your experience during the previous years where you have been active in this region. And this question goes to you and to our friend Christine. No, no, to you, to, uh, to Shafi and to Christine. Thank you, Please, Dr. Baha, two minutes. for Thank the you. question, yes. So what can I say that there are a few Arab countries that they are involved in the internet governance process and debate, and fewer in the active agenda. And uh, as we all know, there have been some attempts to put national or regional internet governance agendas some of these attempts are successful and others are failed to preserve the stage. Just uh, two small examples, for ex the, the national, uh, at the national level, we have the Lebanon IGF, it's a new board, and it's progressing very quickly under the 
in the, in the, in the right sense that uh, Zena informed us two days ago that now the chair of the Lebanon IGF is the civil society, which is a huge step for us because we have never, not a dream, but expected to have this uh, huge jump to have civil society chairing an IGF at national level, which is really a great job and really a congress for this big effort. On the other side, we have the Arab IGF that we work together and we put a really a lot of effort, but it wasn't, or it didn't meet the expectation of the stakeholders for different reasons. For me, I believe that the main challenge here is the slow evolving internet ecosystem in the Arab world. So we need to work on this because if I want to reply to your the question directly, we need to have a platform to discuss all these issues. And this platform needs to be neutral, needs to be open to all stakeholders on an equal footing. We can't give a stakeholder more privileges than the others. And to do this, we need to collaborate and we need that trust first. So if we don't trust each other, we can't go further and proceed to have this a neutral, inclusive, transparent, and multi-stakeholder participation for all stakeholders. Thank you. I'm not sure I understood the question very well, but I will try to, <laughs> to respond. Uh, so um, I, I understand you were referring to <coughs> duplication in efforts. I was referring to a comment that I heard during the, the, the presentation from one of the attendants, and I will ask even Professor Yuvan after that. Okay. About this, that in, as a general observation at the world level, when it comes to cooperation, there is some sort of lack of cooperation. Okay, I got okay? it. And uh, what is your assessment about this at the regional level? Okay. And uh, how, if any, how could this be avoided? Okay, right. Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely there is, uh, there is a lot of overlap. I'm not sure it is in vain. It is because every stakeholder um, community is trying to do uh, what is in her best interest or in the best interest something that they want to achieve. And, um, and I, I see uh, a lack of participation from our region in, in the Internet Governance Forum in specific or in, in the Internet Governance Forum arena in specific. But there is a lot of participation in different other forums. So if we go to the ITU, for example, as a forum, we, there is a lot of participation from the Arab world. There are uh, other forums which we can look at and we would find. So um, I, I maybe want to here uh, come to the discussion that we had on day zero in, um, in the session that, uh, that NTRA uh, organized together with RIPE and CC and the Internet Society. There are so many initiatives in the Arab region happening and they are happening sometimes in a multi-stakeholder format, sometimes in an intergovernmental format, in a multilateral format, and sometimes among uh, uh, operators like MINOG and others. What we need to do is we need to connect the dots. Sometimes we're just not aware of what is out there, and sometimes the interests are not addressed. Maybe at the Arab IGF, we failed to, um, not we failed, but we didn't really manage to uh, get the interest of uh, the industry in a good manner, the, the, in, the interest of the governments in a good manner. Uh, and this is a shortcoming, I would say, uh, that was identified even at the global uh, level and in other NRIs, not only at the Arab IGF. So in order to do that, here is where cooperation comes into picture. And uh, cooperation means that you have to go out of your comfort zone, actually, and uh, be willing to discuss and open up and probably give part of uh, give part of the control that you think you're doing in your own network. And uh, maybe this is a lesson that we can learn from and we can evolve it uh, by awareing each other what is out there and, uh, and be willing to participate even in other forums without being protective to one's own forum. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Christine. I would like to hear the opinion of Professor Yuvan about this issue at the global level. Well, uh, about working group not sharing with each other the information that they should. Well, a sort of good and bad news is that it's not only on the global level, it's on all levels from corporate governments, <laughs> regional, national, global. Uh, the, the problem, there are two aspects. One, silos in a way are natural. Yeah. 
we tend to gather with people Silence. with whom we, 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 we work and uh, share the same language, and it is in a way natural. But the problem with digital, which we've noticed in the panel, is that unlike, let's say, trade or uh, human rights, humanitarian, uh, with digital, you cannot preserve dealing of, uh, keep dealing, dealing in silos because digital is, trans, uh, is a transversal issue. Yeah. And this is a huge problem. And um, one example which I over, always quote is data. You can discuss data in trade context, there's a free flow of data, but there is a human rights privacy context, there is standardization, and that in very often, different aspects of data are discussed in all of the silos, leading sometimes to almost tragic comic situation. Yeah. Now, it's not specific for the, for the, for the, for the Arab region, it's, it's basically cross-cutting issues, even within corporations. Therefore, efforts should be made uh, through training, through policy framing, through uh, nudging cooperation, bringing people from other communities, health community on data, on national and regional level. That is probably the major challenge, I would say, on national and regional le and global level, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. I think that we are now done with this question. Maybe uh, Husay could, could go to the last question, and then we will pass to, to, our, uh, to our colleagues from the table. Fahad, you, yes, okay, please. Yes, thank you very much. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll really be quick here. So I, I tend to agree with uh, Professor Jovan um, on what he shared. So at ICANN, um, around one year ago, we, we started working on, with the community, of course, on revisiting the multi-stakeholder model of ICANN. So what we have seen in the past couple of years is that all the PDP work or the policy development process work at ICANN has been on the rise. Uh, the number of volunteers are kind of limited, and so this created what we call uh, burnout, community burnout, where you find a, a certain number of people on several working groups. And, and this actually has led to working groups uh, taking pro months, maybe years, to conclude their work. And even when it comes to executing an implementation, it would take even uh, more time. Uh, so you have burnout on one end. Uh, this is causing uh, different delays. And of course, when it comes to silos within ICANN, you have contracted parties, you have non-contracted parties, uh, different uh, groups having different uh, interests and trying to bring uh, the discussion to a neutral level where, uh, let's say, rough consensus uh, has been reached. It's, it's pretty challenging, and this has actually instigated uh, this whole concept of evolving the multi-stakeholder model uh, used at ICANN. Thank you. Uh, the last question before taking feedback and inputs and comments from the floor and from the... Um, what will be, or how you envision the role of let's say, regional organization or the prospective stakeholders uh, to boost digital cooperation through coordination and uh, synergizing uh, resources. I'll start with uh, dear Hisham. Uh, thank you, Qusay. I, um, I, I think the, the first thing is to add us the task deficit thing. Um, and, and this goes to maybe what we discussed on the DAISY on the event uh, Christine mentioned, and um, many of you maybe, maybe also participated, uh, that, that we need to strengthen the synergies between the organizations. And for each organization, it's very important to get uh, the process right for all stakeholders involved. Uh, sometimes we just overlook the procedural and process issues and we take them that it's not what we are here for. But if we don't invest the time and effort in these, uh, this can actually haunt the process at later stages and create more problems for engagement. Uh, the other thing I would add is definitely to strengthen the community. Uh, a lot of the disconnect you mentioned Iba, between different organizations because the community itself is also when it's not st strong enough, it's split between different processes. So you don't see the community doing its all to also facilitate the coordination. A lot of, a lot of effective coordination actually comes from the community because if, if you are the same person or the same community, if they are engaged in different processes, they actually bring these dots together and 
this this happens all the time if if people are engaged. So I, for for the organisation and processes, I would say to strengthen and do the process right and to strengthen the community. Thank you, Hisham. May I pass the floor to Dior Kohel? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hussai. Um, so I work for a team at ICANN called the Global Stakeholder Engagement, uh, and our work really is to uh, push ICANN and, and to educate people uh, across different regions on, on what ICANN is. Uh, here within the Middle East, we, do, we conduct a lot of uh, capacity development programs that could range from one hour to maybe five days. So we have a couple of projects that we actually work on uh, with our uh, colleagues at the different internet uh, institutes. Uh, we have a five-day school on internet governance where we literally teach people about the basics of internet governance. And there are a couple of faces here in the room who actually not just benefited from the school, but also have gone on to uh, get themselves involved in, in, in other initiatives. Uh, we do a lot of engagement with, with academia. Uh, we teach students about internet governance. One of the key questions I usually ask is how does the internet function? And, and, and in most instances, people are just quiet. They just you just realize how people take it for granted that the internet is functional and, uh, I mean, we are benefiting from it and, um, and, and, and they just don't think uh, about this notion of how really the internet works, who governs it, uh, who develops all the policies related to it. Now, at the technical level, we also do a lot of uh, capacity development programs, uh, whether um, workshops on DNSSEC or abuse and misuse, and we actually keep continuing to visit at ICANN our, our different um, uh, course portfolio to try to accommodate to the ever-evolving uh, ecosystem uh, of the internet. Thank you, dear Fred. And maybe uh, uh, last but not the least is to hear from uh, the regional organization from Mirna. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's uh, just to hear on... Uh, I thought, I thought, fast. There is a remote participation. Can we take the remote participation before or, um, okay? We, we cannot wait. Thank you, Amal. I would like to thank you, Amal, who is uh, with us for the first time in the IGF, and he is, uh, she is a student, and uh, she was involved from, from the first time with us in uh, managing the remote participation. Go uh, ahead, Amal. I'm really glad and honored for this participation, and for me, it's also a really honor to participate with my origins country, so yeah, I'm glad. And yeah, thank you all for this possibility and chance. No, you can talk. I said I'm that I cannot talk. No, no, I told him that you can talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... Um, Maybe Till then, we can take the floor. The we can take the floor, the yes. 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 Very quickly, coming. thank you, Khalid Ibrahim from the Gold Center for Human Rights. On behalf of civil society organizations and MENA, I really uh, would like to express our wish to work with you. Uh, this is uh, about implementation of the multi-stakeholder approach. It is very important to involve civil society organizations in what, whatever problems uh, that are facing the IGF. We want to work with you to solve these problems. I know we have chronic problems in our region, such as the lack of freedom of expression on the net, the lack of uh, network uh, uh, neutrality, and also the fact that uh, the, uh, IB, uh, the ISB is mostly uh, controlled by intelligence. But all these problems could be solved through cooperation. So I want to work with you to change this mentality that uh, that is looking at the civil society movement as enemies. We are not enemies. We are just citizens. We want to uh, build with you a prosperous future for uh, all our citizens across the MENA region. So hopefully we could work together. We could be involved yes, right. with all your meetings, with all your activities. And we, of course, we will be happy to uh, Put a hand with you in uh, this digital cooperation that will give and give a, a good future for our citizens and it will be prosperous for everybody. Thank you. Thank and you. we hope to see you on board. Any further comment or question from the participants? Please, we'll take it from the floor.
There is a changing mind. It doesn't want to speak anymore, our emotion. Any further comment from the floor? Please. Thank you very much. Uh, Salwa Ghazwani, I'm working for Article 19, Freedom of Expression Organization. I'm working for the MENA office. Um, I'm thankful for this uh, openness to talk about the challenges in the MENA region and what, what is blocking the process at the Arab um, level. So um, I would like to ask uh, if possible within this transparency and openness, which countries are involved and which countries are not? if possible, in this process, in this process. You have mentioned that few number of people, of governments are involved, so, or yes. engaged. Yeah, I said there are a few attempts at national level. So a good example is Tunisia. Tunisia, they have the best national IGF, which is really, I can take it as a best uh, case example. Did and it, we have Lebanon now, the newborn. It didn't take place since three or four years. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I was I was there when I was I was invited last year, I believe, or no, no, in Tunis, yes, the Tunisia, and it was with, yeah. But other attempts, as I said, at the regional level, we don't. We have only one attempt that we all of us worked, and we put all our efforts, but unfortunately, we didn't succeed in making it sustainable. So what we need, I believe, is to identify a new structure, a new approach, to have, uh, I like the idea of IGF plus. Why we don't have Arab IGF plus? I, I like really the idea, and I suggest to apply the, Arab, the IGF plus to a regional uh, Arab IGF. Why not? Yes, plus plus, or whatever you want to name it, but we need to have a new structure, new approach. We, in maintaining the core value of the global IGF, I repeat, we need to be transparent, inclusive, and multi-stakeholder approach. Thank you. Uh, I, will pass, I will pass also to Fahad, please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Iba. Uh, so to your question, um, I mean, you, you, so there are plenty of initiatives that are taking place at a global level. And uh, we see a replication of those initiatives within the uh, regional level. Uh, and I can give you a couple of examples. So when, when we talk, for example, so the Middle East, for example, that I cover spans from Pakistan all the way to Morocco and everything in between. So that's 26 countries. Now, when it comes to holding network operators groups uh, at the local level, Sudan has an excellent example. They've been holding the Sudan network operators group, I think since 2015. And, and, and they just came out of a political turmoil and they just held their uh, fifth edition just, I think, uh, last month. Um, so that's one good example in, in mobilizing the technical internet community in the region. Uh, when it comes to national schools on internet governance, countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, they are actually holding these schools on internet governance on an annual basis. Uh, even Afghanistan went, went one step forward, they are holding a youth IGF very soon. Uh, when it comes to national internet governance forums, again, Afghanistan is, is a really good example uh, to share. Uh, when we talk, for example, about participation at ICANN, if we look at the level of the Governmental Advisory Committee, the chair of the Governmental Advisory Committee is from Egypt. If we look at other cons uh, constituencies, you would see uh, faces from um, Bahrain, from uh, Palestine, from uh, um, Tunisia, who are actually uh, kind of active. So we, th there is no one silver bullet answer, uh, because at the end of the day, when you talk about these initiatives, it's mostly voluntary work. Uh, so that's people dedicating their free time to provide a service to their respective community, um, and, and they don't get paid at the end of the day for all of that. Uh, so it's, it, I mean, there's no one generic answer, but I think there are some good attempts happening in the region. But definitely, there's much more to be done. Th thank you, Fahad. I will give Shafi uh, five seconds, five seconds to see yes. this slide. Just comment. to yes, conclude please. in a positive note and to go back to what Fahad uh, mentioned now, we have an excellent example on a regional uh, initiative which is called MINOG, Middle East Network Operating Group. This is a non-commercial, academic, technical, 
a platform where people sit together to discuss technical and uh, regulation and policy issues. And it's done yearly. Next year will be in Bahrain. And this is really a very successful event. All the countries, yes, for the Middle East region, yeah. So this is really an, a, an example that you can follow. Why not? And we have the governance, uh, we have the uh, platform, we have uh, everything uh, done by volunteers from different stakeholders. Thank, Thank you, you. Shafiq. I think that we can now conclude the session. I, remember, I remind everyone that this is an introductory session. It's, it's not, the goal is to prepare for the launch and kickoff of uh, regional efforts on digital cooperation. I'm greatly thankful for Professor Jovan for being with us. And I will let also uh, Dr. Mirna uh, conclude. Thank you. Thank you very much for everybody for being with us uh, today for this uh, really kickoff uh, session about uh, consultation on uh, the digital cooperation process at global, global and regional level. And I would like to thank you, Doctor, to thank Dr. Uh, Jovan for being with us, overviewing us about uh, the report and the main content components of this report. Uh, thank you very much, dear uh, experts, speakers, colleagues, and uh, uh, attendees. And would like to invite you to a similar session, actually, that we are preparing for during the fifth uh, Arab IGF uh, that uh, is scheduled to be held in Cairo in, uh, during 15-16 January 2020, where uh, there is a main session in which we will discuss more in detail digital cooperation uh, processes in the Arab region. Thank you, Mr. Kusai, and uh, thank you, Mr. Iba, for your uh, very for your excellent uh, uh, chair uh, chairing this session and uh, leading uh, for a fruitful fruitful uh, uh, discussion. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.